So I don't want to come off as a hater because I'm not, and I hate that term personally. I just think it's an overrated term. A lot of you guys don't even know the origin of the term hater. Uh, you know, Biggie Smalls made it popular in the mid nineties. How about that for a snapple fact? But that's neither here nor there. It's hard being a creator of any type of art, whether it's YouTube, whether it's writing books, whatever your craft is, it is super hard to get attention. Now, some of you may disagree. Some of you guys just happen to have what they call the je ne sais quoi. You know, it just clicks and everything just manifests the way you want it and you can do literally nothing, which is actually something, and it can amass to millions of views and hundreds of thousands of subscribers and all that good stuff. But when I see things like this as an author, in the book section of Target, it just breaks my heart. As you can tell from the video, and the videos of late, I've been documenting the amount of rejections I've received from book agents thus far. And I'm on number 22, two, two. Now they've told me long ago that pursuing publishing is one of the hardest things an author can ever encounter. And they weren't lying. It's super hard. Uh, my first book I self-published because I wanted to get a feel for being a small time business owner, printing merchandise, operating a website, creating a business ID, uh, things of that nature. I had the time on my hands and it was just a fulfilling ride and one that I don't regret doing, but I'm not gonna do it for book two. Book two was completed a year ago. And as of January of this year, I started my chase for an agent. I feel this book deserves that much. I feel this book deserves more recognition than my first book. In fact, I think this book can be a movie. Now, most authors are very confident in their craft. We feel like we've written masterpieces and to the general public, it might be blah, but that doesn't really matter. It's really what matters within. And I really feel confident about this book but I've been rejected six different ways from Sunday. And it's crushing. It's definitely crushing, but I'm gonna continue to document it because one, this channel is about making a mockery of life. And who better than yours truly to make a mockery of the amount of rejections I receive? It's fine, life goes on. Worst case scenario, I don't get a publisher and I'll just release a second book as a self-publisher and increase my, my book portfolio. Because ultimately that's what my goal is. Usually you're not gonna become rich off of book sales unless you're just that guy or gal. Um, you're not gonna make a handsome living. It's, a, it's an acquired type of art. One that I've enjoyed since I was a child. Thus the reason I've gone this, this route. But I tell you, it's a crushing blow receiving an email from an agent who you feel like you connect with. Come on guys, they're not even turning the car. But it's tough when you've reached out to multiple agents and you feel like that's the one. You find the one who you think the book will connect with, perhaps on their appearance, maybe just the list of authors that they work with, the style of books that they deal with. And I recently thought I found the one only to get rejected. Now I use Query Tracker. That is the uh, required website for authors looking for agents and publishers. There are hundreds of names you can select from. And I'd say for the most part, when you get rejected, you get a generic response high earnest or high fill in the blank. Unfortunately, usually when it starts out with unfortunately, you're done. Or you may see that little disclaimer, please do not respond back to this email. 
that's heartbreaking. But I'd rather that than nothing. I've had a few personable emails where the agent actually addresses you by name and tells you that they couldn't connect with the character or they couldn't connect with the plot or whatever the case may be. You know, they give you more detail. There's this one agent who gave me a whole like two paragraphs. Um, her name is Emily and I'm forever grateful for that rejection. But I don't want to make this about shaming agents because that's not what this is about. This is about seeing the type of material out there on the market. All these New York Times bestsellers, all these weird titles that, you know, I thought were taboo. Apparently not. But they all have representation. They all have publishing. And it leaves small timers like me and others stuck. It's like, what do you have to do to reach that plateau? I've written multiple draft versions of my current book, thinking that maybe it was a bit too smutty. Only for me to go into certain bookstores and skim through certain pages of particular books of my genre, and I'm blown away. I'm clutching my pearls. Perhaps I should just left everything alone, but I'm trying not to cross that fine line. I'm a black male in the literature world, and that could already be a strike. Survey says it's the harsh reality. Number one, black males aren't the top of the list as far as readers, and there aren't many black male authors writing the type of material I'm writing in 2024. And if they are, they're not getting the recognition. So I have to try to tiptoe, unfortunately, in this industry to not upset the mass. To not upset the masses. But it's tough when I see books like that in the bookstore. And I get it. Some of you will say, oh, well, that's a children's book and it shouldn't be a problem. <sighs> but book writing is an adventure that I enjoy and I'm gonna continue to document this process. Again, I told myself if I didn't get a publisher before the end of summer, I will release my book personally sometime next year. Do I believe I'm gonna get the same amount of results as the first book going this route? I don't, uh, because this time around, I don't feel like operating a website. I don't feel like printing out merch. I don't feel like handing out business cards. I don't feel like starting random conversations with people and asking if they're readers. Yeah. That was fun the first go around. The second go around, I want a machine behind me. I want them to do all the dirty work. Just let me know when there's a meeting greet. Just alert me when there's a conference you want me to attend, whatever. But the groundwork, of book one, I can't do. It was fun, but it was exhausting. So in closing, all you writers and folks out here who wanna write a book one day, it's not hard. Writing a book is the easiest part. It's a matter of ideas, thoughts, outlining. You mix it all up, you create a storyline, whether good or bad, but there's your finished product. It's this step. It's trying to convince the masses that you have a work of art, trying to convince the masses that your material is better than anything else out there. Trying to convince the masses is the toughest part. Aside from editing. I've had many people tell me, Ernest, that's a tremendous achievement, writing a book. And I would agree. But at the same token, it's hard. It's hard. And the toughest part is when you have to deal with the competition that's out here that you don't feel is really on your level. Whether that's creating video content, whether that's writing books, whether that's drawing, whether that's 
dance, whatever you do, whatever skill you have, where you have to sit back and watch others reach certain plateaus that you're like, seriously, people want that. It's not hated. It's just stating the obvious. You don't think that's good enough. You don't think that's quality enough. Of course, your opinion doesn't matter. It's the general public who, you know, make the purchase or give the views or whatever the case may be. But it can hurt. So the bottom line is keep fighting. If you're a writer, if you're a creator, keep fighting. Don't give up on your craft. It may seem like it's all doom and gloom. It's not. You're doing it for a reason. It's a passion for a reason. Uh, follow the signs, follow the laws of, of passion and things of that nature. Just do your research on that. It's in you for a reason and keep fighting. That's the sound advice I have as I near rejection 23.